Um, Professor Kono um, graduated from the University of Tokyo in 1998, and within a few years of postdoc, he got a job in the University of Tokyo as a professor in 2001, I think, uh, and he's been a professor there ever since. And I just learned that Kono san is actually a classmate of Takami san. Yeah, right. He's a very interesting uh, you know, cross world, astronomy is small world. Um, Kono san is a, uh, a war expert on observational studies of galaxy formation and evolution, in particular focusing on some limit and radio perspective. Um, he's led a lot of uh, ALMA surveys, for example, uh, Asagao, ALCS, the large program, he's the PI. Uh, as a few examples. And he is also keen, very rarely, in pushing instrumentation developments. So he has helped initiate a lot of uh, telescope projects like ASTA and TAO. And now um, we're in also in discussion about uh, future instrumentation development between Konosan's team and, and the, the, the Institute uh, for, for future projects. Um, so without any further ado, I'm, you know, let you take over the All right. <coughs> so hello, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, I'm very happy to be here again. So when I go back to ASA, I always feel very comfortable with my old friends and uh, new, uh, very uh, motivated student as well. So I'm very happy to present my talk here. So today I'm talking about the ALMA and the JWST observations of initial line galaxies used in the early universe. But before starting this topic, I would like to make a, a few adverta advertisements of our institute. So uh, this is a one page uh, introduction with our institute called uh, Institute of Astronomy in University of Tokyo. And uh, this institute is primarily focusing on observational astronomy and astrophysics with emphasis on the instrumentation for ground-based optical infrared or radio millimeter wave observations to explore new discovery space. And uh, in fact, we are leading the construction of the infrared optimized 6.5 meter telescope at the summit of the Seo Chan Tho, uh, Mount Chan Tho, that is a uh, 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 same area in the Alma construction site. And uh, if you have an uh, experience to visit Alma site, you, ha you may realize that there's a, a very nice mountain over there. And actually now, I think ne next time you visit here, uh, visit Alma, then you can recognize there's some whitish something at the top of the, this mountain. So this is a Tau telescope. And uh, we will have an inauguration ceremony next month. And actually, I'm in charge of this ceremony, so I'm <laughs> a bit nervous a lot. Anyway, so uh, let's move on to the, uh, my main topics today. So I would like to begin with some brief introduction about the uh, recent status of the ALMA detection of the ionized carbon and oxygen lines. And uh, I'd like to emphasize that these are primarily rely on rest frame ultraviolet selection, I mean Lyman Black technique. That is very powerful indeed, and we are really happy with the recent uh, LVG observations to understand the uh, evolution of galaxies in the early universe based on such less frame uh, universe, but uh, still we do need uh, some unbiased manner uh, search of the galaxies. And then I will talk about some uh, case studies of such initial line selected galaxies using ALMA and JWST, and also I would like to uh, demonstrate how ALMA and the JWST combination will be uh, crucial to un uh, understand the nature of such high redshift galaxies in the other universe. And then uh, lastly, if time allows, I would like to spend a few minutes to talk about future, I mean, uh, towards the next generation survey for uh, line emitting galaxies. And uh, I would like to briefly mention about the progress of such uh, possible tele future telescope, I mean, uh, large submitter telescope and Atlas, which is led by uh, European people. So, all right, then let's begin with some uh, general introduction for students. And uh, currently, uh, we have a very good knowledge about the uh, 
evolution of the dark matter, for instance, by numerical simulation because it behaves uh, simpler than baryonic part of the uh, awesome object. But uh, still, yeah, this kind of the uh, state of art uh, simulation can uh, reproduce uh, several, several aspects of the currently observed galaxy properties. Yes, indeed, but uh, still, they have any many hidden uh, tricks or uh, hidden parameters that should be uh, justified in real world observations. And the uh, yeah, tricky part is that the yeah, real asymmetrical object consists of the uh, baryonic part of the universe <coughs> that con contains, for instance, dust and gas, and uh, they are very uh, complex, uh, they have a very complex behavior with very uh, complex uh, interaction with others and uh, radiation, etc. So, and uh, in order to address latest exciting question like, you know, generosity seems to uncover too many galaxies in the outer universe, for instance, and why we have such too many galaxies. And also, we already have a uh, supermassive black hole or a very massive black hole in the very outer universe. Say, we already know that the most distant quasar at redshift 7.7 7 .7, and also recent JWST observation identify the, one of the most distant uh, growing um, massive black hole at redshift 10, beyond 10. So we need to understand why and how they deform. And also some, of the, some recent observation reveals that there is so many obscure galaxies, it is invisible in uh, near flat band in HSC like a uh, H-band dropout galaxy uh, identified routinely. So, <coughs> in order to understand these or address these questions, uh, still ALMA has a very crucial role because ALMA can detect uh, rest frame, firefight, fine structure lines, I mean ionized oxygen and ionized carbon lines, that is a very luminous and also very useful to trace uh, interstellar medium in high-rest galaxies. Here's some two examples. So, uh, left panel shows that the, there's a uh, redshift 9 inch uh, oxygen line emitting galaxy. And uh, uh, based on the uh, <coughs> SED model, including detection of the such elevated, very bright ocean line, they argue that the, they already have a matured star population already at redshift 9. That means that the earliest star formation already started at redshift. 15 or something. So that leads to the further question about why such active star formation can happen in early phase of the universe. And also, uh, left panel show the <coughs> uh, Tamarasan's results, Tamarasan's results detecting the oxygen line at redshift 8.3 Lyman Black Galaxy. And uh, in this case, he showed, uh, he showed them, uh, 300 parsec resolution are very sensitive and high resolution images of dust and uh, ocean line, and uh, he found very uh, different behavior uh, distribution of these two uh, tracers of the uh, interstellar medium, and they argue that there must be some large scale or kilopascal scale of center cavity existing that can be a super bubble. So, this uh, very intense stellar feedback is already happening in this within this galaxy. And also, uh, we now also read routinely uncover uh, candidate uh, quasi galaxies. So in this case, ALMA is useful to justify th they are not non-star forming. So ALMA cannot detect. If ALMA does not detect anything from these candidates, then we can say, oh, these, these are quasi quench galaxies. So that is another evidence for the uh, RS star formation in high rush universe. So, uh, but, uh, and uh, these are target observation, right? So, toward the uh, Lyman Black selected galaxies. But some cases we serendipitously detect uh, unexpected ionized car uh, carbon line emitting galaxy, for instance. So, in this case, Fudamotsan uh, targeting uh, known uh, Lyman Black galaxy at the center of the ALMA field of view. But uh, in this case, they found a very luminous. Uh, Carbon two line, uh, C two line emitting galaxy over there, so and uh, over there as, as well. So in this case, they see nothing in near infrared images 
from Hubble and the video observations. And uh, some cases they are very weak even in dust emission. Actually, uh, this source is also very weak in dust emission. So uh, in this case, pre-selection of the dust is, does not work. So that show the uh, necessity for the uh, kind of the unbiased manner of the galaxy survey. Of course, in this case, uh, we can successfully detect some such uh, detection of the uh, C2 line emitting galaxies, but uh, still this is targeting on such a line of black galaxy. So this is kind of the biased results. All right, with this mind, we trying to uh, introduce our uh, on a large program on the lensing cluster survey. So uh, this is a 100 hour alma large program in cycle six to search for uh, intrinsically faint contained sources and line emitters with assistance of the massive galaxy clusters as natural telescope in space. And uh, 33 lensing clusters from Hubble Space Telescope treasury programs, I mean CLASH, from Field and Elix. And uh, we are covering almost uh, more than 100 square minutes with a depth of the 60 microjansky at one millimeter wavelength. And this is a, a 15 gigahertz wide spectrum scan, so we can also uh, search some uh, millimeter wave line emitting galaxies. And uh, we are yielding almost 200 quantum detections securely. And uh, uh, we are <coughs> also working with this uh, <coughs> data. And uh, if we compare with other uh, existing uh, survey, so this is a survey area and the survey depth. So uh, LCS look at here, and this is a kind of the uh, moderate depth, shallower, wider survey compared with uh, like a very drilling aspects large program. But uh, once we consider the lensing effect, situation is very different. So right, pan <coughs> right panel show the uh, survey area versus uh, sensitivity, and uh, this is uh, aspects deep survey, and. Uh, Actually, uh, this is a uh, low value of the uh, low uh, value of the lensing cluster survey. But after considering the lensing correction, this survey is very unique, right? So this is covering the uh, most sensitive and widest survey compared with existing this survey. So we can really uh, investigate fainter regime of the uh, submillimeter source counts. And in fact, uh, Seiji Fujimoto. He's now a Hubble Fellow at UT Austin. Now, in this video, working with this ARCS data, and uh, he, uh, after his long struggling, now we can successfully uh, construct the number count at 1.2 millimeter wavelengths, and uh, we find the uh, steady increase, as shown here. Actually, this is uh, somewhat contradictory with aspects results. So, aspects results uh, imply the flattening already happening at this flux level, that. Uh, if it is true, then we need the unknown as a uh, source as a, for the infrared background sources. But uh, our re results naturally explain the uh, such a point, faint point source can explain the cosmic infrared background light. Anyway, and uh, but this is a content source. But uh, today I'm trying to focusing on uh, line emitting galaxy, as I mentioned. So. Uh, one interesting discovery of this alma lens cluster survey is this one. So discovery of the highly magnified lens galaxy at redshift 6. I would say this is one of the most strongly lensed galaxy beyond redshift 6. And uh, this uh, image shows the uh, Hubble Space Telescope uh, image in blue, along with the uh, C2 line distribution in red. And uh, we, see, we see many such red spot over there and over there. And uh, yeah, at the very early beginning of the of our study, we independently uncover such bright line emitting galaxy here and here, here. So we are wondering, oh, we see kind of the cluster of the uh, CO emitter, something like that. But uh, after uh, intensive discussion with the lensing expert, we converge that, uh, we realize that, oh, this is a highly magnified sources single from single object, right? And uh, our solution says, uh, our uh, conclusion that this is a ratio six-ish uh, galaxy with highly magnified source. So, 
And uh, our, mod, our, our model predicts that there, there must be some uh, fifth image here. Actually, that, that is outside our LCS region, so we also put uh, for a proposal to confirm there's, if there is a, a C29 or not. And uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I will tell later, but yes, we also uh, confirm the detection of the C2 at this point accurately, so we can uh, confirm and refine the mass model towards this galaxy cluster. Anyway, this is unique because this is uh, apparently, apparent brightness is uh, outstanding as you showed. So this is a redshift and this is a apparent, apparent brightness. So that means that this is highly magnified. And uh, in, in this case, again, so dust continuum is very weak. We see three sigma hint of the dust continuum to this source. And uh, actually, if we look at the uh, broadband images taken from Hapo and uh, Spitzer, we see very elongated uh, signature that is dropped at shorter wavelengths here. So th this dot will be foreground, but uh, this highly elongated one should be uh, with high redshift source. And uh, finally, we identify these uh, associated with. And uh, even with this uh, initial ASS data, we can uh, start some uh, pixel to pixel source reconstruction based on uh, available mass model. And uh, we have uh, uh, rich data and uh, we have uh, many lensing spot in our team. So we can uh, compare with the three mass model and uh, we are converging. Uh, this is a reliable uh, re source plane reconstruction. And uh, we find that the, we can achieve almost uh, 100 or 30, 300 process scale resolution in source plane. So this is a re really exciting stuff. And also we can uh, suggest, we can have a hint for the rotation supported system already. And uh, this seems to be very interesting target. Then we are starting, we are launching very intensive follow-up program toward this target. And uh, we are successful to obtain almost more than 100 hours using Alma, JWST, and Muse as well. So uh, we are now still ongoing to uh, obtaining and analyzing the huge amount of the data set from Alma and JWST. But uh, now I would like to show some highlight of these results. <coughs> so <coughs> this is a uh, uh, near cam images, newly taken near cam images. And uh, now uh, we have uh, follow up our Alma observations. So resolution, under resolution is much improved and sensitivity is, is much improved. And so, as I mentioned, so we confirmed the fifth image over, over there, so we can detect C2 as a same redshift as from here. And uh, now, uh, based on such near-term data, we can characterize the uh, stellar properties as well as the uh, ionized gas properties. And also, we made uh, some uh, JWST West Frame Optical Spectroscopy and uh, we can successfully detect many lines as shown here. So we can obtain the uh, stellar mass and the summation rate and uh, visual extinction and uh, metallicity as well. And also we don't see any evidence for AGN. And uh, so if you look at the uh, stellar mass versus summation rate, so we would say this is a, a typical uh, main sequence galaxy, but uh, its stellar mass is very small. I would say this is uh, intrinsically, uh, obs observationally this is very bright, but uh, intrinsically this is a very uh, typical, I would say this is a kind of the sub L star main sequence galaxy at ratio of six. So now we can learn about the uh, very typical uh, low mass star homing galaxy in the epoch of the cosmic realization. And also we can derive the mass metal situation. So this seems tend to be uh, follow the known uh, stellar mass to metal duration as well. And also visual extension seems to be typical. And uh, yeah. All right, then let's see the morphology of this galaxy. So at the initial Hubble space telescope image does not tell much about the a structure of this galaxy. So we see this kind of the blob at, 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 at Hubble Space Telescope resolution, but now JWST new, now can show the, reviews a huge number of the clamps as shown here. And uh, now uh, we can try to model uh, the 
real structure of this LFC by using the source the, the composition and uh, now we call this is a cosmic grape. Now you can feel how, how why we are talking about this cosmic grape. But anyway, so this kind of the uh, highly crampy structure has been uh, clearly identified. And uh, so this is a source plane deconstruction. So anyway, so yeah, we see many uh, sub kilopascal scale clamps over there. And uh, let's see about the kinematics of this galaxy. So if we look at the uh, latest deep and high resolution C2 arm observation, hollow up observation, we see clear hint for the rotation. So we can confirm early uh, indication, suggestion of the uh, rotation supported system on this galaxy. And also we are awarded JWST time IFU, IFU observation to uh, map out uh, H alpha emission in rest frame. And uh, also H alpha seems to suggest, seems to be dominated by uh, circular rotation as shown here. So, and uh, we are making uh, some detailed uh, kinematic modeling based on these data. And also we can use uh, oxygen three Rest of optical, rest of optical oxygen three line as well, and uh, surprisingly or interestingly, all these three different traces coherently tell us about the uh, nature of the rotation supported system. It's a bit surprising to me, and uh, now we can uh, reconstruct the uh, extract rotation velocity as well as the uh, velocity dispersion as shown here. So uh, yeah, we would say this is a, a rotation supported system. And also we can compute uh, two merge cube parameter and uh, this seems to be very unstable. So uh, such unstable nature will be the reason to have such so many clamps. But uh, then what can be learned from this observation in, te in the context of the surgical prediction? Actually, this galaxy is very difficult to reproduce in current state out galaxy formation models. For instance, uh, some model can reproduce uh, rotating disk as from here with the same stellar mass. Uh, we are talking about same stellar mass regime. So this is a low mass galaxy, but this, yes, such uh, rotationally supported low mass galaxy can be happen in the simulation, but uh, in this case, they see very little substructures. So there's uh, no clamps. On the other hand, if we have much stronger feedback, then it is easy to uh, reproduce such crampy nature. So in the fire simulation, they can easily reproduce uh, crampy nature as you here. So they are somewhat in some sense very similar to our cases, but in this case, velocity structure is very perturbed compared with this, uh, this is far from uh, ordered uh, circular rotation. So again, so fire model cannot reproduce our uh, observed cosmic grapes. So perhaps uh, this is uh, another uh, uh, ex express expression of what I said in the previous panel. So for instance, if we uh, compute crampiness, this is defined by Conseil and their collaborators paper. Anyway, so uh, fire paper, uh, fire results seems to be uh, close to our uh, results, but uh, they are far from rotation supported system, so it, it cannot reproduce. Anyway, and also we can uh, compare with the clamp luminosity function as shown here, but anyway. So uh, perhaps uh, we are witnessing the formation of such smoothly rotating, rotating disk with relatively weak feedback. So if we, if we have a very strong weak feedback, then yeah, we can describe this uh, very part of the structure. So weak uh, feedback must be in some sense regulated. So, <coughs> and uh, we also observe very uh, high density star forming clamps in this galaxy. And uh, actually uh, some theoretical model predicts that the such high gas surface density clamps will have a very high star formation efficiency even in low metallic condition. This is uh, uh, some theoretical prediction by Fukushima-san and Yajima-san in Tsukuba University, and uh, they uh, predict such behavior. So perhaps this kind of the uh, high gas surface concentration will explain the observed high uh, 
bright and ex kind of bright and accessible UV luminosity function at redshift uh, higher than nine or whatever. Anyway, so yeah, this kind of the uh, highly compact and uh, elevated sublimation activity can be explained by such uh, crampiness. All right, and then this is a uh, uh, one uh, example how unbiased um, blind line emitter sites can uncover a very unique and important target to study uh, galaxy formation. And uh, the other uh, example is this Abel 3744 cluster. This is one of the uh, upper frontier field. And uh, in this case, uh, Seiji Fujimoto and the collaborator uh, made a four times six striker units and a 30 gigahertz wide better scan throughout this uh, cluster. And uh, actually, this is a, a natural extension of the LCS survey. So uh, this uh, green marked region is the uh, original LCS surveyed region, but now uh, they have a much wider and a deeper observation. So if we compare with, again, if we compare with the survey area and the survey depth, still LCS is uh, better, but uh, still uh, this uh, only one field, but this is wider survey can be very uh, good to investigate the such uh, coherent uh, survey observations toward quantum source as well as the line emitting galaxies. And then uh, fortunately they can successfully uncover another uh, C2 line emitting galaxy at ratio 6. So in, again in this is interestingly uh, they have a uh, dust contained marginally but uh, this is a very weak. So I think their controlling is not very good. <laughs> I think the highest control is just a three point something sigma. So this is very uh, marginal detection, I would say. Anyway, so this is a very bright in C2, but uh, weak in dust continuum. So again, I would like to emphasize the uh, importance of the line emitting galaxy selection. Anyway, so in this case, <coughs> uh, they have very luminous uh, C C2 line as you here. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, so, so this is a, uh, uh, we can easily define the survey volume based on these numbers. So uh, we can uh, easily constrain the uh, luminosity function of C2 line at ratio 6. So in this case, this is a relatively bright, so we can put new constraint here this one, uh, around this uh, luminosity regime. And uh, I would like to also, I'd like to uh, emphasize that the, our uh, LCS large program uh, covering more than 100 square minutes with uh, 15 gigahertz spectral scan can also put uh, deepest constraint on the C2 line luminosity function at ratio 6, and this is a LCS limit. Because we uncover a very highly magnified source, as shown, already shown here, so uh, we can put very uh, fainter uh, fain part of the emission function can be constrained as from here. So again, I would like to emphasize the importance of such a uh, blind manner of the line emitter such. Anyway, so once we uncover this kind of the, uh, line emitting galaxies and we can make a, a successive uh, follow-up observation, then uh, in this case, we can put another uh, follow-up natium spectroscopy observation yeah, I would say the LBC is really great. Only three hours observation can <laughs> obtain this kind of the nice uh, spectro uh, spectroscopy. So yeah, really impressive. Anyway, so then, then we can compute Palma decrement to derive the visual extinction, and also we can derive H beta based summation weight. And also we can uh, estimate uh, metallicity based on R23 method or or 32 method. And uh, that consistently show the this is a uh, one tenth of the solar metallicity. Anyway, so this kind of the things can be investigated by combining Alma and the ZWST. So I guess I would say this is a very nice combination of the Alma and the ZWST. All right. So then, okay. Still, I have thirty minutes. For something like that. Okay, so then I, I will br briefly uh, also go through this part. So this is a, uh, this part, 
I think many of you already know about this uh, early release data of the JMSC. So, but uh, I, uh, our team also put uh, our DDT program to add one of the very interesting line emitting source. So, I would like to quickly go through the results. So, uh, this is another uh, lensing field. So, we, are, we, we exploit the power of the lensing. So, in this case, this is a high, uh, moderately magnified. So, we can uh, exploit such uh, lensing. And uh, in this case, uh, we see nothing in the uh, ALMA continuum emission, but uh, perhaps this may be due to dust temperature. But anyway, so we can have a very nice UV slope. So, this is a very wet source in terms of the UV continuum. So, perhaps uh, some dust must be. Anyway, so point at the emission. So, again, this is a very beautiful Everybody surprised to see this uh, rest frame optical uh, uh, data taken with the JVC near spec, and uh, now we can constrain uh, many physical parameters based on this data. So now overall line can be also measurable based on <laughs> this data. So it is really happy to see that. Anyway, so we can uh, understand the nature of this this galaxy. This is a very low mass, low metastasy, very low, ma low metastasy galaxy. And uh, by adding ALMA data towards this source, now we put, uh, it's a DDT, so relatively shallower, but uh, anyway, we can, anyway, marginally detect O3 and uh, C2. And uh, we can argue that the, there must be some hint for the, still, yeah, you know, uh, we need much further uh, integration eventually, but uh, we see some hint for the outflows seen in uh, rest frame oxygen as well as the uh, C2 in f rest frame firefight. And uh, we would say that this kind of the uh, special extended C2 emission can be seen in m much uh, more massive high-risk galaxies. In fact, uh, some uh, studies, including Seiji Fujimoto's work, show the such presence of the such uh, ex special extended C2 halo beyond the stellar distribution, and uh, they must be a uh, signature for the such uh, early phase metal enriched gas uh, outflow. Uh, but uh, this result suggests that the uh, presence of such uh, metal enriched gas outflow can happen even in very low mass systems. This is a very low mass one, and very, very low mass systems. So it is very nice to compare with theoretical uh, prediction about the point as mass loading factor predicted by solely uh, to be uh, observation like this. <coughs> yeah, I would say this is another uh, challenge to the current solely uh, with the formation model. So because such Loma system, it's difficult to uh, reproduce such high met uh, metal and kind of the metal enriched. Uh, I mean, C two detected. Uh, extended halo is very difficult to reproduce. But anyway, and uh, also another important uh, demonstration of the combination between ALMA and JLSC is shown here. So now we can compare with uh, rest frame, fine fret, oxygen, ionized oxygen line, 88 micron line, and rest frame optical oxygen, ionized oxygen line. Then we can compute uh, important uh, physical parameters like uh, electron density as shown here and uh, yeah actually there's uh, some uh, study about such uh, measurement of the electron density in near or uh, I don't know if we can say this is nearby but it's relatively uh, lower redshift uh, galaxy and higher higher redshift galaxy and uh, in our case uh, combination of the such five red uh, oxygen uh, 588 micron line and uh, rest frame optical oxygen line uh, gives somewhat uh, consistent results with other uh, rest galaxies. Right, and uh, also uh, this is a uh, rather ordinary business talking about the C2 over O3 line ratio. This is a uh, uh, regularly discussed with uh, high galaxy observed by Al uh, ALMA by detecting C2 and uh, O3. Anyway, yeah, we see, again, we see elevated 
O3 uh, emission as shown here. So, <coughs> and uh, I would say C2 emission tend to be suppressed for its sum uh, summation rate. So, perhaps this must be somewhat, in some sense, consistent with low metallicity gas condition or low metallicity uh, dwarf galaxies in local universe. And uh, I do not go to detail, but uh, yeah, perhaps we can think about possible scenarios for explanation of the elevated O3 over C2 line ratio in high galaxies as shown here. Alright, so then I would like to go into the uh, other uh, recently uh, launched uh, line emitting project using JWST called Magn uh, Magnif. So this is a uh, uh, medium band astrophysics with grism of the near, near cam in frontier field. This is led by Feng Sun in uh, Arizona University, University of Arizona. And the uh, idea is to uh, exploit a uh, very efficient near cam grism observation to uh, blindly discover and search for uh, spectroscopically confirming uh, line emitting galaxies beyond ratio 6. And uh, we are focusing on a lensing field again, and uh, then we can exploit existing rich uh, ancillary data from Hapo, Spitzer, and Alma. And uh, <coughs> so if we look at the uh, redshift coverage of this uh, observation, we have some sweet spot, for instance, redshift 6 and also redshift uh, 8 to 9 then we can uh, observe H-alpha and also rest frame optical oxygen and H-beta line again. So this kind, this kind of combination will be very crucial to characterize uh, the detected galaxies as already demonstrated in previous slides. And we are, as I mentioned, we are targeting uh, known uh, lensing cluster field, I mean frontier, upper frontier field, so we can uh, exploit very rich uh, ancillary data, including HST, JWST, and ALMA as well. So, <coughs> uh, for instance, we are targeting ABEL 2744 cluster, and uh, we are, uh, this is uh, some uh, example of the such uh, observation coverage, and this is the direction of the dispersion. And uh, yeah, I would say this kind of the study seems to be tend to be popular now nowadays, so now uh, other people also trying to do this kind of the uh, line thing as such using this mode. But anyway, yeah, we have some initial results. So uh, this is a uh, spectrum obtained by this uh, early initial uh, data of this project, so we see very clear detection of the line, and uh, by consulting with uh, as a broadband data, we recognize this is a redshift 8.3 galaxy. And uh, yeah, I, I know we are still uh, too early to discuss the uh, kinematic structure of this source, so we need to further follow up observation using the LBST and ALMA, but uh, we see some hint for the rotationally supported system. I don't know if we agree with that, <laughs> maybe uh, we need more data. Actually, we are uh, receiving very negative report from the referee <laughs> about this interpretation, so maybe we are too aggressive to say so. But anyway, yeah, uh, this kind of thing can be uh, doable using data. And uh, perhaps some of you may wonder or remember the name of this cluster, right? So this is a very famous cluster, and uh, some of you may remember that the I, my first Introduction, I mentioned that the UH Tamiya observed O3 emitter at ratio 8.3 behind this cluster. <laughs> so perhaps we are witnessing, uh, we are uncovering over density of uh, line emitting galaxy, ocean emitting galaxy in this, behind this cluster. So we are very excited to see how to confirm that. But actually we see some early uh, <coughs> hint for the multiple detection of such redshift 8.3 uh, O3 emitting galaxies, so we are very uh, 
now intensively working on how to confirm the detection of such uh, possible overdensity of such uh, lens clusters. All right, so uh, this is the last part of the scientific uh, discussion about the line emitting galaxy. So lastly, I would like to mention about the CO line emitting galaxy. So I would like to talk about the um, isolated massive bird spiral galaxy at cosmic noon. So uh, actually, this is this story back to 10 years ago. So Yoichi uh, Tamura and uh, his collaborator uh, Toshiki Saito uh, observed the local ULAG called uh, uh, local ULAG and uh, they made a spectral scan to study the chemical properties of such uh, local ULAG and uh, they they serendipitously uncover a uh, CO uh, some line emitting feature it's, that's very bright so this is uh, this this is a band three spectrum so this is very bright uh, emission feature uh, uncovered just. Uh, nearby the targeting uh, local uh, galaxy, local Euler. And then uh, Thomas-san investigated what, what's this, and uh, they consulted with other broadband data, because this is a famous uh, nearby uh, Euler, so we have some rich data in some sense, but uh, it is very close to the nearby galaxy, so data is heavily contaminated by the, uh, the emission from the local UNAG, so it is very uh, tough work. But anyway, you uh, mentioned that this is a Redshift 2 ish galaxy. And then uh, one of my students, uh, Mizuko-san, worked intensively about the March band data, and uh, they also uh, reduced the archival ALMA data to investigate the nature of this source. And uh, as you see, this, is a, this source has very narrow line widths. And, uh, you know, some of the hardest, some of the hardest people now immediately come to the idea that, oh, this is a lens, because uh, this is a tube light compared with line widths. So then we published a paper arguing that this is a, a highly magnified uh, source. But now JWST comes, and uh, we have a very nice uh, images in rest frame. Uh, uh, near, uh, very nice uh, near infrared and mid infrared band data as from here. So we see very red galaxy as a point of this emitting galaxy, and uh, yeah, we are very surprised to see that this is a very beautiful bird spiral galaxy, right? And uh, after the uh, SED analysis of this data, we found that this is a very massive, so ten to the, uh, five times ten to the eleven solar mass. And also, this is a very gas rich, so at least more, a few times even uh, 10, 10 to the 11 solar mass in molecular gas mass as well. And uh, this is a uh, uh, SMG like, classical SMG like summation rate up to elevated up to 500 solar mass per year. But this is uh, hosted by very beautiful, regularly shaped bird spiral galaxy, not margin galaxy, right? And uh, in order to test hypothesis that this must be some accompanying galaxy, then we uh, carefully look at JWS data, JWS data as well as the ALMA spectral scan data to search for such uh, line-emitting sources, but our conclusion is that this is a totally isolated galaxy without any gas-rich counterpart, a uh, companion. We couldn't find anything about the such gas-rich companion already. So I would say, yeah, and uh, interestingly, this is a uh, by Chandra, so this is also host uh, X-ray agent as well. Anyway, so people may want to refer to this very famous Philip Hopkins diagram to explain such evolution of the such uh, <coughs> extreme starburst, like SMG like starburst with AGN. So, and the people argue that oh, this must be merger-driven starburst scenario, but uh, in this case, totally different. So. Perhaps we see we may have to think about other possible scenario to explain or uh, emergence of the such dusty starburst galaxy. So yeah, now I'm asking to TC for if we can identify such isolated <laughs> dusty summit galaxy in his sample. But anyway, I would say summit galaxy can 
reside in very diverse environment, I would say. All right, so this is a summary of the, my uh, scientific part. And uh, so I would say uh, line emission galaxy section is also very interesting to identify unique and uh, important object to understand the nature of the uh, galaxy formation evolution in high redshift and even at cosmic noon. And uh, <coughs> so in order to facilitate uh, promote this kind of the study. So last, last, how many, how many, I do I, maybe I have another five minutes or so. Okay, then another five, last five minutes will be used for uh, technological development in the future. So uh, perhaps we can dream this kind of the line emitting galaxy survey in cosmological volume, uh, cosmical volume. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, our colleagues in, uh, for instance, uh, Kana Moriarty in University of in Physical Department can uh, simulate the distribution of the oxygen-388 micron emitting galaxy as shown here, at ratio 7 as shown here. So you see, this is a uh, uh, 0.5 degree, and uh, we currently, we only observe tip of the iceberg, right? So we are just observing very bright one. But anyway, so in order to uh, study the global picture of the uh, this sources. Eventually, we may need this kind of the blindly selected uh, blindly survey blind survey of the line emitting galaxies. Perhaps this can be implemented by uh, latest rapid advancement with the integrated superconducting spectrograph (ISS) technology. This is developed by uh, TU Delft and their collaborators, and we are working closely to advance this technology. And uh, perhaps uh, we can imagine uh, upgrade version of the uh, such imaging spectrograph, 3D imaging spectrograph accompanied with large single dish can uh, produce uh, this kind of the uh, 3D view of the universe selected by uh, lime emitting gases like oxygen or other carbon. So a few years ago, I made a very naive uh, estimation, but uh, this is before JWST. Now, JWST unveiled the uh, richness of the high redshift Stockholm galaxy in the high redshift universe. Perhaps this must be super rich, I would say. <laughs> anyway, so perhaps our open question for this direction is perhaps some people argue that oh, we just rely on JWST. Perhaps uh, Raman Black galaxy section is fine, and then we can target in individual galaxy. Then perhaps we can just rely on a uh, much object spectrograph option to uh, individually targeting this kind of sources. That can be efficient compared with ALMA. Perhaps so this we can also investigate such option as well. But if some of you think a uh, fully blind survey of the line galaxy is necessary, then Let's discuss about that. Of course, that can be very extensive, but uh, I don't know. Let's discuss. Anyway, so uh, in that sense, perhaps next generation some millimeter web telescope to explore new discovery space in our man James era will be uh, important for us in the future. And uh, that's the reason why we are talking about the uh, large centimeter telescope and Atlas telescope. We are now uh, working closely to implement this uh, future capability. So perhaps I do not want to go detail about this telescope, but uh, our idea is to explore new discovery space, complementary to ALMA, so we can go wider in volume, space, and uh, relative space as well. And also we can do high cadence observation to explore time domain science as well. And uh, in order to realize such capability, of course, telescope itself is important, but also we do need uh, new generation instrument that enable us to conduct wide area survey, both imaging and spectroscopy as well. And uh, we are uh, in, in Japan. We are also uh, working hard to publish science white paper. And uh, we last uh, winter we successfully published this science white paper by. Uh, gathering almost 100 astronomers in Japan. And uh, also we are working hard to make progress in technology as well. And uh, <coughs> also uh, we are working hard with uh, 
European people, and they are now leading the Atlas project, and uh, we are closely worked uh, to implement these new possibilities. And uh, actually, they spent a uh, significant amount of the money supported by EU Horizon 2020, and uh, they start some uh, funded uh, anti design study with uh, industry. They are building the ALMA antenna, and so they have now uh, have very clear idea about the such good uh, accuracy telescope can be uh, implemented by reasonable amount of the cost. And also they already published the science section report, and uh, they are now uh, preparing for next EU proposal. And uh, actually that was just submitted uh, with our uh, strong collaboration with the uh, Japanese team, as well as the Taiwanese people as well. So we hope this, once this proposal is accepted, then we can further proceed this uh, project jointly. And uh, in our side, uh, as I mentioned, so we are focusing on new technology called uh, integrated superconducting spectrograph. That is a, a new technology to implement broadband uh, low spectral resolution spectroscopy toward high ratio galaxy or other application like a SZ effect or a line intensity mapping, whatever. And uh, we have now uh, this uh, science grade. Uh, we, we already make uh, some engineering demonstration uh, a few years ago, and uh, we now developed the science grade version of the spectrograph that covers uh, 220 gigahertz to 420 gigahertz in one shot. That means that the uh, that can cover re sheet redshift from 3 to 7.6 something in one shot. So that can act as a kind of the some of the version of the X shooter, I would say. So we can that must be very nice. Uh, complement to the uh, redshift search instrument to add very dusty uh, bright galaxies. And uh, I would say still we need more uh, sensitivity <laughs> to add this source, but uh, I think we can begin with some uh, early scientific operation to add brightest uh, dusty sources. So I need some your input about the bright uh, some of the galaxies. Anyway, so uh, last winter we made uh, some uh, early science verification uh, using ASA telescope, and uh, we successfully obtain very quick data toward a nearby uh, safer galaxy, and we can easily detect such CO lines. But uh, this is before calibration, so sorry that. But anyway, we are now working on how to calibrate. Anyway, so based on this success, we are also uh, advanced our technology to implement a three-dimensional imaging spectrograph. and. Uh, Actually, recently we are awarded a very big grant from JSPS to develop such a uh, three-dimensional imaging spectrograph, specifically for line intensity mapping using CO and C2. So I think some of you are also working on uh, line intensity mapping using a low frequency band, but so I'm very happy to collaborate with this direction as well. And lastly, uh, maybe I need to click now. So. Uh, now, you can see this uh, white paper to show the uh, latest design of the Atlas telescope. So now you can, yeah, many people ask, you are talking about the LST or Atlas, but uh, are you sure to construct such high accuracy 50 meter class telescope, exposed telescope in Atacama, but now they have solution as shown here. Yeah, and of course, uh, we are also still working closely with them to optimize the structure of the telescope. And the huge Tamla and the Zakorveta is also working on a very sophisticated algorithm to uh, optimize the stru backup structure. So I think this must be a nice complement. All right, so I will stop here. So uh, I would say uh, merger of the LST in Japan and Atlas in EU is in progress. So I hope this merger will drastically enhance the credi credibility of this or reality of this uh, ambitious project. So I hope we can work together, even with Taiwan people. I will stop here. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, 
Regarding the cramp, yes, yes, we see many uh, hint for much more uh, crampy galaxies, ubiquitous, I would say. Of course, uh, in this case, this is a very uh, highly magnified, so we can investigate the uh, kinematical structure. So most cases, we just see the uh, broadband structure. So it is not directly compared with these results. But anyway, yeah, we see many hint for the ubiquitousness of such crampy galaxy at high risk galaxy. So I think this can be, this is not exceptional. Maybe this is the kind of the general aspect of the <coughs> such. So Yeah, okay. So in that plot, it's only from the the, the measurements from the, the single galaxy, the galaxy. Uh, I mean, on the uh, right hand now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we see the, we see the uh, individual uh, spot or clumps of this cosmic grape is shown in red. And Yeah, indeed, yeah, that's an important point. So, yeah, if we look at the uh, native resolution of this data, so still we see just a uh, uh, kind of the blob. But uh, because this is high magnified, so they, we can resolve the uh, 100 parsec scale uh, cramps. So, perhaps, uh, yeah, you are right. So, perhaps uh, we need more lens sample to investigate further. But anyway, yeah, thank you for your question. Yeah, that's, point, that's a good point. Um, high redshift galaxies, you see the, the C2 outflows. I'm just curious about this many-sequence galaxy in the special about 6. Mm -hmm. And did you see, you, you see the clump list, and mm -hmm. you're thinking maybe you have a scalar feedback. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, do you see any scalar feedback uh, like wings in the C2 emission? Yeah, yeah, that is another important point. And uh, originally, we think there must be some hint of the outflow in C2 or HLF or, or oxygen line. But so, but uh, at this stage, we see we, we would say mostly dominated by rotation, yeah. and uh, of course we see some deviation from here and here. But uh, I would say still it is difficult to say this is a kind of the large scale outflow. So in this case, uh, we would say feedback is very weak Wait. compared with uh, next example. Mm -hmm. So obviously we need more sample to. To what degree this kind, this situation is uh, common or uh, exceptional? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. Uh, in the, one of the slides, you show a extended oxygen three outflow. Mm -hmm. no mass yeah, yeah. I wonder if you can comment on what is the source of the, um, the outflow itself? If it's uh, probably star formation in in the discussion about the AGN or Such a question. Yeah, in this case, we see no evidence for the AGN, so this must be stellar feedback. But uh, yeah, uh, we need to more, we need more careful discussion about the energetics, about the, so why we see such a extension. So anyway, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Two yeah, yeah. Um, indeed. I may miss some information. I'm just curious um, whether this. Oh, okay. So, so the right hand side is the Alma. Uh, it's the Alma. So it's not really, the resolution is not really good. But for the data risk T, um, it looks uh, it's resolved. So, do we have any information about, say, its current gradient? <coughs> something like that, so we can say as it or is, um, for example, the star formation um, profile is look like say local spiral galaxy, mm -hmm. or it's mm -hmm. the dust distribution, mm -hmm. or other those uh, special mm -hmm. information. Thank you for your question. Yeah, actually, we we are doing a 
uh, follow-up observation using ALMA, and uh, we already received the data. And uh, actually, uh, we already have a very high, very nice resolution uh, band 7 continuum data. And uh, actually, so this uh, contour should be uh, dust continuum distribution, and we see very uh, clear uh, offset ridges in dust emission along the leading side of the bar. And also, we recently obtained the CO423 high resolution data. And again, so CO423 data also is with very clear uh, uh, to offset ridges in the leading side of the bar. So it's a very typical nearby bar dispersity like uh, kinematics and structure. But uh, I would say the gas fraction is very high compared to the obviously, uh, compared to nearby galaxies. So we need to understand who feed this galaxy. <laughs> And uh, so that is why we are doing a very deep, now conducting deep integration in C1 and C1 emission in galaxy using ALMA. And uh, we start to see some hint for the very special extended C1 emission up to 20 kiloparsec or 30 kiloparsec, something, something like that. So maybe this may be outflow, but um, maybe we are also thinking about and the metal anise gas inflow may be visible. <laughs> So now we need more deep observation, but anyway, such uh, ex external feeding can be uh, visible in the future, <laughs> near future. It sounds like it's also possible to take it as a um, respirant optical spectrum. Ah, okay. Right, to, right. To, right. To, yeah, into this zero. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah. Thank, Thank you very much, yes. I think this is a very, very curious object. <laughs> <laughs> the benzene uh, galaxies we detected. Um, is it possible to go further, higher resolution using the analog? Like yeah. More than 10 kilometer. kilometer Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, it, it, it costs the observing time, but eventually, yeah, eventually we would have to propose so you can highest resolution ALMA data to achieve more than 100 per sec resolution. Exactly, yeah, right, right. But not yet. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> It's a very expensive project, must be. Yeah. So I have a final, I guess, maybe open science question is that in the grander scheme of things, with all these observations, discovering galaxies, amazing galaxies, the cosmic dawn, mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, what's the most surprising part that we discovered cosmic dawn that compares to the other epochs of the universe? Mm -hmm. That's really hard to understand for now. And what's you know what's changing? What's the mm -hmm. paradigm shift from cosmic universe, for example, to mm -hmm. cosmic dawn? Mm -hmm. that, you know, this physical picture is, mm -hmm. is changing in your opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say one of the interesting things is that the, we start to see the kind of the over density of the metal ends galaxy even at redshift eight. Mm -hmm. So that really surprised me, and uh, perhaps we really need to why such over density of the metal enriched somewhat much other galaxy mm -hmm. cluster already happening. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we are talking about such things with theoretical people, and uh, we are also intensely discussing about it. But yeah, I think maybe it's we, by taking up more uh, observation using AMA or other survey like instrument, perhaps we can uncover more such over dense region. And uh, as you know, uh, in higher redshift universe, uh, more star motion rate is dominated by such over dense regions. So mm -hmm. perhaps mm -hmm. we, I think it is also important to uh, focus on such uh, over dense region in higher redshift. Right. So you think it's accelerated growth? Exactly right. Of right. The cosmic right. structure as well right. as the enrichment of the ice and exactly the right. right. That's very surprising. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Any further questions? Thank you very much.